Basically, that's how it works. And when the, when the chief is out there doing his or her thing, depending who the chief is, there's always a command staff behind that individual helping them. And the decisions that are made by that chief typically are made by the chief alone. Those decisions are made with a group. The chief listens to his or her command staff and ultimately gets the best information and makes the decisions that he or she thinks is best for their community and their police department. That is no different with the Antioch Police Department. And uh, um, having a very talented command staff made my job a lot easier during my uh, six years as the police. <coughs> so, six years. Six years. Oh. Yeah. I went by like that, trust me. Um, so, succession plan. I put this up here because a lot of people don't understand what succession planning is. This was a definition I took off the internet last night. And, and there's a couple definitions a process that identifies important company players, pinpoints organizational gaps in work experience and skills, information that is critical for determining training needs and identifying future leaders, the sum and substance of human resource planning, an ongoing process that ensures a continuity of leadership for all critical positions, a system that ensures the right people with the right skills in the right place at the right time. So um, those I mentioned six years, I've been with the, the city almost uh, 30 years now. And I'm in, the, I'm in the process of making my transition into a, a private sector entity or another public sector entity right now. And, and there was going to be a transition here within the city of Antioch. And I feel that our staff, um, particularly uh, our prior chief, Chief Wachulski, uh, Chief Hyde, and myself have done our best to make sure succession planning was in full effect within our department. <laughs> And we've done that by sending individuals to different um, schools, trainings, putting them in leadership roles throughout our, throughout our organization, and ultimately preparing them for the next step. Because when, when I leave, Antioch Police Department is not going to miss a beat. I've come to realize that. Um, it hurts, I'm gonna cry, but it's, but, but it's actually the truth. When, when I leave, we're not gonna skip a beat because we have incredible people uh, working here. How is it determined you leave? I sign some paperwork and I go, <laughs> or, or, or I'm fired. I'm, I'm an at-will employee, okay. so that's, that's how it works. So, with that said, um, I am not the decision maker on who is going to be the next police chief for this organization. And, and T didn't know that, I, I showed him the PowerPoint, but I slid this slide in at the very last minute, so he didn't know this was up there. Um, but what I wanted to, um, to explain is, when you're talking about a, a, a police department of our size, uh, we're the second largest in Contra Costa County, we're the lowest staff in Contra Costa County per capita, um, we have some unique uh, challenges ahead of us. And the next police chief is going to have to understand those challenges and what this, what this city and culture is all about. So I just put us some highlights here regarding Captain Brooks, going through the department 22 years. Um, one of the things I, I, I didn't uh, put up there, uh, T and I are friends. Uh, that's no that's no surprise but one of the reasons why we're friends is I try to surround myself with quality individuals and some of T's history uh, T uh, has a master's in uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry that's me master of public administration T has a master in leadership and uh, I was I was filling this out kind of quickly this morning I apologize um, T has a master's in leadership but most people don't know that T didn't graduate high school he didn't he went back, got his education, became a police officer, worked his way up through the ranks of the uh, rank of captain, which to me shows a great deal of character, ambition, and uh, very proud of him. Uh, T is also a graduate of the FBI National Academy in Quantico, Virginia, and Senior Management Institute of Police in Boston, which is taught by um, Harvard University instructors. Uh, it's very, very few prestigious schools that he's attended and graduated from. Wow. Accomplished leader within our, within our city, uh, gifted communicator, those of you who heard T speak. And you're gonna hear T speak when I'm finished here because T is actually gonna handle this coffee with the cops. Wow. Yes, I knew the front row would like that. <laughs> I, I've got the hint multiple times. Um, those of you that were here for the swearing in, T did an excellent job with that. But most of you probably weren't. But T did a presentation for uh, our animal shelter regarding ARP coming in and working with our organization to make our animal shelter, shelter even better. And I was looking through some of our social media and found out that Tony La Russa complimented T regarding his presentation uh, on art 
and what they're doing with, with our city. So that was just a testament to not only his communication skills, but his ability to uh, convey a message and influence people. Um, respected by his staff as well as the community. Those of you that aren't aware, T is out there all the time. When I can't be there, and I can't be there a lot, T steps in. T is always there. T is an individual who I trust to represent our department, and he does it well. He understands our city's issues, understands our culture. Um, and I will tell you, being a police chief, I've had the opportunity to sit on oral boards for captains as well as deputy chiefs and even chiefs. And I'm not gonna say the departments that I've had the opportunity to actually sit on those boards, but I will tell you, if that man were applying for those positions, he was head and shoulders above those, those other candidates. And that's not a slam on them because they were highly qualified candidates. But this is what Captain Brooks brings to the position. The last uh, point I want to make is how do you become a chief? Anyone know? Not UT, not you, Tony. You, you have the right political connections, maybe. Uh, that, that's something, that's something <laughs> Starting from the bottom. Well, uh, yeah, that, that helps too, but I'll, I'll tell you, it's just very simple. Yeah, very you, simple. You got to have all what T has. That's right. Yeah. You do. And, 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 and obviously T has it because it's T. Exactly. But I, will tell you, <laughs> but I will tell you, the one the one way you become a police chief is one person believes in you. And that was my city manager, Jim Jankel. Otherwise, I would not be a police chief. Because one day I was a captain, the next day I was a police chief. Is there a learning curve? Absolutely. Most police chiefs last about two years and two months. That's the average. I've been here six. There's no doubt in my mind if he's appointed to this position, he will, he will succeed that. Yeah, no doubt. He has more time to actually put in that position. So my point is, as we move forward with this city, and again, for those of you that don't know, I am a resident of Manioc. I will continue to be even when I move on to a different uh, career. I'm going to continue to live here, and I want my police department to continue the professionalism that I think this staff has exuded. And as T moves forward in, this, in these processes, whatever that process is going to be, I'm hoping that members who have attended the coffee with the cops will, will lend him your, your support for that because it's critical that the community supports their next chief. Okay? So with that said, I've got some coffee over there. T is actually going to take over the, the presentation. And it, had, I called, had I called and said he was going to do it anyways, but he was, he was obviously here to, uh, to back me up, and he always has. So I'm gonna turn this over to T. Um, I, I'm not saying that I'm leaving tomorrow. I do have more time with the department, but I think it's really critical that the department, excuse me, the city gets to see different members of our department, particularly Captain Brooks, as we make the transition from my retirement to um, T taking over in the interim. So I'm gonna give this to T, and T, if you take over, I appreciate it. I am all, Embarrassed right now. <laughs> I, know he he is. Smile, so. I will thank the chief tremendously. I will tell you, I'm very humbled by the support that the chief has provided to me throughout the years. And he's right, we are friends. But him and I have had conversations in the past where we have friends in this organization that we both recognize will not promote. We, we would not promote them to a supervisory rank. And it's not because uh, we're not friends with them, it's just because we recognize that maybe their skill set is at a certain level. Before I continue on with the PowerPoint presentation and my embarrassment, hopefully I'm not too red, I do want to note that while the chief was speaking, Erica Rodriguez Langley from Assemblyman Jim Frazier's office walked in and so I just wanted to acknowledge